The Irate Gamer. Man, who remembers this dude in his heyday? It's fun to think that at one point, this guy was one of the most hated YouTubers ever. You'd have rant video after rant video, parody after parody, ripping this guy 15 new assholes. Ah, simpler times I tell ya. Of course, all that drama has been left to the wayside and even forgotten by many. What with the last breath of relevance this guy had being a crossover with the man he fucking ripped off? That begs the question, now that we've truly seen the evil depths of YouTube, was Irate Gamer ever really that bad? Well, I'm gonna take you back to the past, to talk about a YouTube reviewer who sucked ass. I would rather eat. Yeah, I'd rather eat. The Irate Gamer got his start in 2007. Around this time, we started seeing other YouTubers reviewing retro games in an irate fashion, and while obviously inspired by the AVGN, they at least wrote their own stuff. But here comes Chris Bors, who said to hell with that. Many people quickly realized how similar the irate gamer was to the AVGN, but not just due to him being an angry reviewer, but the things he said and even the games he reviewed. There are quite a few lines he says that are blatantly stolen from the nerd. I wish I could go back in time to prevent this game from being made. This game made. is so bad, I wish I could just go back in time and stop it from ever being created. What a shitload of fuck. What a shitload of fuck! Cow a fucking piece of dog shit, this game is a cowabunga shit! It's like you touch the top of the building, you die, you touch the ceiling, you die, you touch the floor, you die, too far to the right, you die, too far to the left, you die, you die, you die, you die, 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 die. Now if you hated the log ride, I guarantee you're gonna hate this flying carpet level even more, since anything you touch here will instantly kill your ass. Touch the ceiling, you die, touch the ground, you die, touch the lava, you die. Even if you think about touching anything in this level, you will die. This quickly made the irate gamer a controversial figure in the YouTube game reviewing scene. Tons of videos calling him out, even parodies of his failures, such as one of my favorite golden era YouTube series, Third Rate Gamer. Even though mocking the irate gamer is antiquated and then some, this series is still worthy of many laughs. And also, look at the other enemies in this game. Piranha plants, walking flowers, chain chumps. Why can't there just be one enemy in the game? Games with more than one kind of enemy suck. Don't even bother with this game! It's fucking horrible! I mean, I'd rather stick my tongue in an electrical socket. This game is dumber than that last episode of The Sopranos where they- Definitely worth checking out even now. This carried on until around 2011 to 2012 or so, when the irate gamer really started to fade. It seemed there was little reason to beat this now dead horse. And now that it has been nearly 15 years since Irate Gamer hit the scene, there's actually been a bit of nostalgia for him, both good and bad. Whether you loved him in his stolen toilet humor, or fucking hated his guts, the memory is always there. But for the most part, everyone has basically given up bashing the boars, because, well, there's worse things on YouTube now. And with the AVGN crossover, it's safe to say that the rivalry that never really was is finally over. So that begs the question, was the irate gamer really that bad? Well, for his time, yes. Such obvious plagiarism was jaw-dropping during YouTube's early years, and with AVGN being one of the biggest names on the platform then, this understandably sparked a lot of outrage. Not at all helped by the fact that, for years, Chris Bors didn't even acknowledge the AVGN. But let's be real here, this was the very early days of YouTube we are talking about. YouTube content creators, even at their best, were a long ways away from the production values we see today. It was kind of the Wild West days of YouTube, so while Irate Gamer's plagiarism wasn't something I can really support, I can kind of excuse it considering literally every other game reviewer at the time was doing the same old angry shitload of fuck shtick. What other kind of style was he supposed to do? In recent years, he's gotten a lot better and moved away from that style. Case in point, his video on the hidden levels of Mario 1. I had this vid appear in my recommendations and I got curious, so I watched the whole thing and was quite blown away by the fact that the irate gamer is actually really good now. I'm not even joking! I actually enjoyed it a lot more than certain AVGN episodes of the past few years, believe it or not. Especially that pitiful collab with Gilbert Gottfried, and my eyes still the worst AVGN video in existence.
But back to the irate gamer. Even then, looking back at his older and more infamous videos, they aren't even unwatchable in the slightest, and the many flaws that got him into hot water are worthy of many laughs. I was having a blast just listening to all of his research errors, stolen lines, and terrible toilet humor. It is the pinnacle of so bad it's good. I don't know how anyone can hate this stuff anymore. And shit, if you thought Mr. Boars was the worst YouTube game reviewer of his time, take a look at Game Dude. Now who is Game Dude, you may ask? Well, Game Dude was one of those shitty reviewers, lost in the ocean of shitty reviewers, who fulfilled his purpose of being a shitty reviewer. His videos aren't even worth laughing at, they're just... sad. At least he acknowledges his inspirations, but that doesn't save him from being one of the worst game reviewers to ever grace YouTube. So in short, the irate gamer may have been bad for his time, but with recent years showing the absolute worst of what YouTube has to offer, his old content actually has improved with age. And his recent content is kinda underrated. Seriously, if you still hate this guy for his past, grow the hell up, sit down, and go watch one of his recent videos. It might actually win you over. And considering the fact the irate gamer's channel is pretty much dead, I can relate with him and even empathize that he doesn't get the credit he currently deserves because of his controversial past. As someone who has had many of my old viewers abandon me for daring to branch out, it pains me when content on YouTube doesn't get the attention it deserves. Mainly due to close-minded people who refuse to move on. I can't truly recommend his recent videos, but all in all, they are good. So anyone who's still holding on to that 2007 mentality should try giving his recent output a shot. I love the AVGN, and I'd say he's one of my favorite YouTubers. But I'm not gonna bullshit you here. His recent content is very hit or miss. On one hand, you have stuff such as the Pepsi Man video, which is one of his best episodes that he's ever made. But on the other hand, you have stuff like his Life of Black Tiger review, in my eyes one of the worst episodes he's ever made, an absolute tidal wave of trite. When it isn't flat out boring, it's bombarding you with tired hackneyed turd jokes that make Game Dude look like Scott the Waz in comparison. Even getting Gilbert Gottfried can't help this putrid pile, and truth be told, it just makes it even worse. This is the worst usage of Gilbert's talent since that one Shudini infomercial he did. Bending over to put your shoes on is a backbreaking chore. One wrong step, you could end up on the floor. And trying to get them off can hurt even more. Well, now there's Shudini, the world's first shoehorn that lets you get your shoes on and off with ease. Yeah, that actually happened. I love AVGN, I really do, but man, 15 years of the AVGN and Seasonal Rot is reaching Simpsons tier levels. He is the game dude, 